Welcome to this video on P3. Today we're looking at the hardest questions from the last few P3 exams. Now, these are not my opinion on what's the hardest. These are solely based on the ones that the fewest number of candidates managed to score marks on, or where the mean score for the question was quite a bit less than 50%. Now, I will leave a few seconds at the start of each question just to give you time to pause it and have a go yourself. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, this first one is essentially the reverse chain rule. I use a rough integration to do this one. So, you know, thinking of part one, I'd go to the side, you know, my kind of rough work, and I would say, right, let's let y equals 2x minus 5 to the power 8. Because if you're integrating, that power's going to increase, isn't it? Differentiate this, and we get 8, 2x minus 5 to the power 7, multiplied by the inside of this bracket differentiated, so multiplied by 2. So that's giving me 16, 2x minus 5 to the power 7. So I can clearly see here that I need to get rid of this 16 so that it matches up with the original, isn't it? So I would need to divide by 16, so that becomes a divide by 16 there. So this is 1 over 16, 2x minus 5 to the power 8 plus c. You would have got a mark for getting this part of it right. You know, it's only two marks. And I think in this question, there were quite a few people who used substitution, which is fine, and you will get the right answer. It's just very time-consuming. And those of you who've done a few exams now, certainly you've done your P1 and P2 by this point, will understand that time is your probably one of your biggest enemies. So, you know, substitution is a much slower, longer method. Part two is quite a standard question. It's of the form, you know, what this, isn't it? Where one function is a differential of the other function. So the one on the top, is a differential of the one on the bottom, or if you differentiate the bottom, you get the top. So if differentiate cos, I would get sine. Yeah? So that's where I wanna start. Again, you know, for part two, I'm probably gonna start with a rough uh, integration here. So that would be ln one plus two cos x. Now, if I differentiate this, I would get 1 over 1 plus 2 cos x multiplied by this differentiated. So 1 differentiates to 0, 2 cos x, cos differentiates to minus sine. So this would be minus 2 sine x. So this is minus 2 sine x over 1 plus 2 cos x. So the bottom is correct. The top, we got minus 2 and we actually want 4. So we clearly need to multiply this by minus 2. That will get me the right thing, which means that I need to multiply this by negative 2. So my answer... If I just uh, rub that out of the way, but my answer here is going to be minus 2 ln 1 plus 2 cos x. And it's so easy, so straightforward. Now, of course, we're not completely done here because this is one with limits. So I need to substitute these values in. So I'm just going to bring it down here. Let's call this i. So i equals minus 2 ln 1 plus 2 cos x. 
and that is between pi by 3 and 0. So minus 2 ln 1 plus. Now cos pi by 3 is a half, so it's ended up being 1 plus 1. Um, there's a few ways in which I can do this. I'll do this as a separate one. Minus, minus 2 ln, and this is 1 plus, and log of 0, sorry, cos of 0 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. So what we've ended up with, because of this 2 minuses here, we've got 2 ln 3, minus 2 ln 2 and then if I'm doing my, my rules of logs here of course you can use your calculator but we can say ln 3 squared minus ln 2 squared we're bringing the 2's up these are of course takeaways let's divide so this is now ln 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, so it's ln 9 over 4. And what I would say is, you know, this is particularly important to be able to do with this method because it is asking you for A. So if you did just this in your calculator, you're not going to get it in terms of log, you're going to get it as a decimal. And the other thing I would say is that you have your integration function on most of your calculators which allows you to do numerical integration. What I would then do is make sure it's in radian mode for this. And I would do this in my calculator, press equals and check then that the decimal is the same as this. So, you know, I'm expecting a decimal to come out at uh, 0 0.81 something. Okay, so it's just really useful to check that. Now, part A in this question was generally done very well. However, part B was deemed very challenging by many, and part C was also very difficult. And that's probably where most of our focus will be for some of you. But obviously, I'll start with part A anyway. So part A, very straightforward. We're just looking at essentially the minimum value. So it's going to be the value to make this uh, modulus here zero, because any other value will make this modulus a positive number, which means it won't be this minimum point. So we're looking at 2x plus 7 equals zero, so x equals minus 7 over 2. And then the y value is what would happen when this is zero. So when this is zero, we left with minus 10. So y value is minus 10. So my coordinate is minus 2, sorry, minus 7 over 2, minus 10. And that was part A done, and as I said, most people did get that right. Part B is where a lot of people did go wrong. This one is solving this using algebra, but we've got our modular sign in there. So that's kind of where we have to be careful. So if I think of this bracket, or this modular sign essentially as being a bracket, what I want to do is I'm kind of going to get two options. So I could get a half, and let's change it to an actual bracket now, 2x plus 7 minus 10 is greater than or equal to a third x plus 1. Or it could be a minus. And the reason you're doing it like this is you're thinking about what could actually happen. You could actually have had a minus in there and the modulus turns it positive. Okay, which is why it then works for the equation. So we have to think of both. Okay, if we're just doing it purely algebraically, we'll do both and then we need to check in the original inequality because sometimes one of these values might not actually work because it might be from you know where this graph so a third x plus one is going to be something like this isn't it third x plus one says so should cross up both the new one and the old one 
So both of these search should give us a solution, but sometimes in some cases, only one of them will give you a solution. Two might, you might get two, al two solutions algebraically, but only one possible solution when you look at it in terms of the inequality. And that is our answers to part B there. Just sorry, speeding it up for you a little bit. Hopefully that was okay. Now, part C. So this one, we've got to sketch the graph of y equals mod f of x. So the modulus will mean that this part, it can't be negative. Yeah, the y is never gonna have a negative value, but we do have a part where it's below. So all I need to do for my sketch is the same kind of graph. So, you know, it's going down here uh, and it would have normally hit. It's not a very good graph. Let me redraw it as it's a lot closer to the zero there. And then it's going to come back up the other side. And then in between where it would have hit this V, this has got to be a pure, isn't it? So, you know, it's going to be essentially like that. Yeah. And we've got to have zero. This point here will be the same as, our, almost the same as our answer to part A. As so it'll still be minus seven over two but it'll be positive 10 instead of a negative 10. And then I'll see my x, my y. Now it does ask us for the local maximum, which we've done, and the local minimum. So that will be the points where it's crossing or touching these axes here. So we need to work those out. So that'll happen when y equals zero, isn't it? And I can basically use the original f of x for this. It makes uh, no difference because it crosses at the same point. So it's just making that equal to zero. And then same as before, we want both the positive and negative versions of that bracket of that modular sign and me personally I always put the minus outside a bracket just so that you know I don't make any silly mistakes so here 2x equals 13 x equals 13 over 2 it's clearly going to be that value there minus 2x minus 7 equals 20 take my 2x to the side that's going to be minus 27 x equals minus 27 over 2 and that will be that value there and that is part c done and what i do think is where part b and part c where a lot of students probably went wrong is all down to how they're using this modular sign okay let's move on to the next question Again, this is another one where part one was done reasonably well by a lot of students. However, part two is where many, many students either went completely wrong or where they might have given up where, or where some have just used the wrong kind of method, got there in the end, but spent far too much time doing it. You know, this part two is four marks, four minutes. It shouldn't take too long. Anyway, let's make a, a start. So part one, we've got two sec squared x minus three tan x equals two. Clearly we need to change the sec squared in terms of tan. And if you can't remember these, you know, you only really need to at least remember the main one, which is sine squared plus cos squared equals one. In this one, if I want it in terms of tan, I can just divide by cos squared, because that will then give me tan here, won't it? 
So dividing them all by cos squared x. And that gives me 10 squared x plus 1 equals sec squared x. So if you can't remember them, you can create them from the original at any point. So you can see here we went 2 tan squared x plus 1 minus 3 tan x. Let's take the 2 to the left side and make it equal to 0. 2 tan squared x plus 2. 3 tan x minus 2. Oh, this is going to be nice, isn't it? 2 tan squared x minus 3 tan x equals 0. Couldn't have really wished for an easier one to do. Take my tan x outside. It's with a 2 tan x minus 3. So we get tan x equals 0 or tan x equals 3 over 2. So I just need to go ahead and basically solve these. Now don't I? It shouldn't be too difficult. So let's do that. So when tan x equals 0, x equals 0 also. And for these type, I would always remember roughly what the kind of graph looks like. So this is your, your kind of tan graph. It's going as far as 90 or minus 90 there and it repeats every 180 so the next point is going to go through here is going to be at 180 isn't it so we've got tan x so x equals 0 x is going to equal uh, pi and that's as far as we need to to go because of our limits so that's that one and then we want the tan x equals 3 over 2. So this is going to give me 0 0.983 uh, radians here. All right. And then to get my additional values, I just want to think of my cast rule or method. It's positive and we only want up to the 180. So the next time tan is positive is here, isn't it? So it's not going to work in this case. It's just a single value. So we've got just three possible values here. 0, 0 0.983, which is the three significant figures, and pi. Now, when I do double check and go back to the question, what you will notice is that x is greater than 0. So that does actually mean that I don't need the zero. So I've just got the two answers, which is 0 0.983 and pi. Part two is clearly a proof that. So we get sine. So what I like to do with the proof that, I'm just going to save a little bit of space. I normally do write the question out again. But left hand side equals sine 3 theta over sine theta minus cos 3 theta over cos theta. Because you don't want to think of this as an equation, it's an identity, yeah? You're proving that the left side is equal to the right side, so you're not swapping things from side to side. Biggest mistake people make. Pick a side, start with it. Usually the left side is the one that works, so go with that. I've got a fraction, clearly I've just got a number in the end, so let's start by making this a single fraction. That is generally the best way to go. So sine 3 theta. If I'm going to make this over sine theta cos theta, then I will need to multiply this one by cos theta, and my second one by sine theta. And then comes a bit of recognition. So if you think about sine A minus B, this is sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. And in this case, we got three theta and theta, haven't we? So if you look at it, that's sine three theta cos theta, sine three theta cos theta minus cos 3 theta sine theta, 
course, he's he the same thing. It's even in the same order. So that means along the top, I get sine three theta minus theta over sine theta cos theta. Now, my sine theta cos theta, which is on the bottom, okay, again, this is one to recognize. So I know that sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. So dividing by 2, I get this. So again, you know, if I let a be my theta, yeah, that's what I've got. So it's a half sine 2 theta. So I'm just going to take this over here. So we've got sine 2 theta on the top, and we've got a half sine 2 theta on the bottom. That equals 2, that equals the right hand side. And therefore it has been proven. And even with my explanation of this, that took me less than three minutes to formulate a question. Okay, that's what you should be aiming for there. Okay, making sure you are number of marks, number of minutes, that is your maximum. Now in this question, many candidates spotted that this is the product rule, but they really struggled because it was in terms of y. But lots of people using dy by dx instead of dx by dy, and then often kind of getting the answer wrong, but kind of pretending as if it still equaled this, when clearly what they'd done didn't. Okay, so like some of the lines in between being wrong, and that's what kind of cost the marks. Part B here as well, again, it was another challenging question. This is the type of question that really kind of distinguished between the A and A star students. So let's jump in. So we've got X equals Y e to the 2Y. So differentiating this, we're going to get DX by DY and it's going to be Y multiplied by two uh, e to the two y differentiated plus e to the two y multiplied by y differentiated okay so it's just the exact opposite of what you would or the exact same thing as what you normally do for x but you're doing it for y okay so we've got two y e to the two y plus e to the two y or e to, to the 2y, sorry, so tempted to write x's, isn't it? And 2y plus 1 in a bracket. So that is my dx by dy. We want dy by dx. But actually, before we jump into the dy by dx part, let's just take a glance at this. Look, there's no e to the 2y in it, is there? So let's look back at this. And I'll do this one in green so it stands out and you guys can see what I'm doing here. Coming across from here, x equals y e to the 2y. e to the 2y is x over y. So what I'm gonna do is, before I flip this, I'm gonna replace that with x over y, 2y plus one. Okay, and don't forget then, that's the same as having that right the way across. So my dy by dx is y over x times 2y plus one. Or if I write it exactly how they've written it, that would be the 1 plus 2y. Okay, actually not very difficult differentiation here. Uh, just involved this uh, substitution that you might not have noticed. That's what you have to look at the question for. So that was part A. Now with part B, we've got 
x equals k. That means it's got to be x equals, it's got to be a vertical line. And for it to hit, you know, um, if I just draw a random vertical first. And for it to cross anywhere here, it's just going to cross in one, one point, isn't it? It's this little section here where it's going to cross in two points, isn't it? So what I actually need is I actually need this point right at the end there. So I find that minimum point there and then it'll be up to this y-axis because this is tending towards the y-axis. So left of the y-axis or less than that and touching this little point here. So a couple of ways to look at it, but it's essentially going to be about this bracket. If I think back to this, when this was zero, the only way to make this right side zero is if this bracket is zero, because e to the two y can't be zero. So two y plus one must be zero, so y is equal to that minus a half. Okay, so that is what's gonna give me that value there. Now that's the y value, we need the x value. So x equals y e to the two y, isn't it? So x is equal to minus a half e to the two times minus a half. So it's minus a half e to the minus one. That's what we're looking at there, which is minus one over two e. And therefore my values of k are less than zero, less than or equal to, or just maybe less than actually, minus one over two e. And that is it. Job done. And the reason it's not, you know, equal to that one, because at that very point there will only be one solution that I'll like. Okay, so it'll just touch one, so it's gotta be the greater than that, less than that one as this is tending towards the y-axis. Now it's almost a significant number of candidates scored zero marks on this question, of which I don't think is that difficult to question. So, you know, and it's it's one of those ones that really should be able to do. So let's get straight into it with uh, part A. So we've got two sine theta minus 30 equals five cos theta. So the first thing I wanna do is split this up. Remember what we talked about earlier? Sine A minus B we did, wasn't it? It's sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. That's all we're doing here. So two sine A cos b minus cos a sine b. That's all it is using that formula. Now I'll leave the two outside a second, but we've got sine theta, which I'll write in a moment, but cos 30 is going to be root 3 over 2. Minus on sine 30 is a half. And lo and behold, the twos will cancel. That's quite nice, isn't it? So we get root three sine theta minus cos theta equals five cos theta. So that's root three sine theta equals six cos theta. And that will give me sine theta over cos theta on the left, six over root three on the right. So that's tan theta, and again, you can do this right bit in your calculator or not, up to you, but you're rationalizing it. So we're getting six root three over three. Three is a cancel, leaving that two. So tan theta equals two root three as required. Okay, nothing difficult there. Four minutes. You know, even with a bit of an explanation, a little bit of stopping, this took two minutes to do. 
okay? You do need to practice these kind of things if this isn't your strong suit. The more you do, the more you are able to spot what to do quicker. It's just all about getting that experience. That's what it's all about. Hence or otherwise, so that means or suggests that the first part will help you do the second part. So let's compare them. So we got two sine theta minus 30 equals five cos theta. So you can see that there is a difference of 20 here. So quite clearly it's the same as theta equaling x plus 20 because that's there. And if I substitute x plus 20 in here, Times x plus 20 minus 30 or x minus 10. So that's what we got. Therefore, we can say that tan x, oh, let me rewrite that uh, a little bit further down, but we, what we can basically say is that tan x plus 20 equals 2. Root 3. Okay? because all we need to do now is substitute in for the x plus 20 into here. And this makes my life so much easier, you know? Now, while I am doing this, I'm actually gonna use this one, because I like a single angle, not when I've got an angle plus something or multiplied something, I don't like to deal with it. So I like a single angle. So I'm actually gonna deal with tan theta equals 2 root 3 okay and if I look at my range currently it's for x so x plus 20 is between 20 and 380 so theta must be between that 20 and 380 so that's what I'm solving here so let's find our first value of theta so from my calculator I've got 73.5 nine degrees and i'll store this in my calculator i like to leave a little letter near my working out where i've stored it storing this in a if i store this in my calculator so i can always use that full value if i need it now i need to go and use my cast method obviously if you don't have to use this method but i do think it's the easiest now tan is clearly positive here Therefore, it's going to appear in these two sections. The first value, which is obviously theta, so that's 73.9, isn't it? We're obviously going in this direction from zero. And what we got then is 180 plus my theta. So 73.9 degrees and 180 plus 73.9 degrees. So that gives me 73.9 degrees and 253.9 degrees. And that there is my values of theta. But if I look back at my question, don't forget this is all about in terms of x, isn't it? And if you remember, theta was equal to x plus 20. So we need, now need to swap my theta with an x plus 20. So x plus 20 is obviously the same angles as it stands. And then it's plus 20. To get the x on its own, I need to take away 20. So x equals 53.9 degrees and 233.9 degrees to one decimal place, which is what the question um, asked for here. And with my talking in between there, that has taken me about four minutes to do that question, including the talking, which means that I would have, you know, obviously I wouldn't be talking in an exam, but, uh, you know, potentially could have gone slightly over my three minutes there. But luckily I did make that up on an earlier question. Okay. But it is important to try and stick to these timings when you're revising. Okay. You should keep a clock in front of you, stopwatch, something like that, and time yourself. Even if you don't do a full paper, you know, set yourself one question or two questions and time yourself against the marks. A minute, a mark. Another
question here that had very mixed responses from candidates. I do think this particular paper um, coming so soon after COVID and lockdown and things, it did prove to have quite a few questions where students clearly didn't fully understand everything. So part one, we're integrating between four and two. And I'm just going to take this up to x minus 3 to the minus 3 there, dx. Now, you don't have to do it this way, but a very rough integration, we could see that this would be 2x minus 3 to the minus 2. And that gives me... this when I differentiate. So I can see that this is multiplied by minus 2 from the original. So all I want to do there is times by minus 2, so this becomes a minus 2. So here I've now got, I'm going to call this i, so i equals minus 2, 2x two minus 3 to the minus 2 like that. And four and two. You can also just do this as the opposite of what you're doing. So you're going to add one to your power, divide by your new power, and then divide by this differentiated. Okay, I'll do that over here as a very, I don't know what I'm doing here, as a very quick one. Okay. So you can add one to the power, divide by your new power, and also divide by the inside differentiated. So you're actually dividing by minus two times two. Okay? Sometimes I do that in two steps, like in my head, that's what I'm doing. Divide by the power, divide by the inside. And that gives me my minus two, two x minus three to the minus two is the same as you know up here so you've got more than one option you don't have to use the rough kind of integration there it's totally up to you now back over here let's substitute in four and just realize there I don't know why you've got a, a zero in there it should be two shouldn't it so minus two times um, if I'm doing this without a calculator, which, you know, I do generally do. I need to really write this in the right way, isn't it? So two times four minus three squared, like this. Minus two over two times two minus three squared. So looking at the bottom, we got eight minus three is five. Five squared is 25. So we have minus 2 over 25. And then we're taking away, but 2 2 is a 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. Squared is still 1. So we've got minus 2. And this gives me 48 over 25, or as a decimal, 1.92. Personally, I tend to leave things in that decimal form, sorry, the fractional form. Just, uh, I just prefer it. Now let's look at part two. Again, this is one that's about recognizing. You might look at this times this and think, oh, it's product rule, oh no. Um, even though it's worth like two marks. Okay, it's not. This, you know, if you think of f of x, this is the differential of the inside of that f of x. That's what's important, isn't it? Okay. If I think of then a rough integration, so let's go with x squared plus 3 to the power 8 dy by dx is going to be 8. x squared plus 3 to the power 7 multiplied by the inside differentiated, which is 2x. So this gives me 16x, x squared plus 3 to the power of 7. You can now see 
that this part is the same as this part, yeah? So all I need to do is get rid of this 16. So I want to divide by 16, so this bit up here becomes divided by 16, and that's my answer. So we get 1 over 16, x squared plus 3 to the power 8, plus c, because I have no limits. It's not a definite integral there. Now, an unusual one, this one. I mean, it's quite a common style of question, but we had around half of the candidates scored five or six marks in this question out of six, and almost all of the others scored nothing. So very much a all or nothing type of question. So first part just tells me that R is 45 centimetres. Okay, which is what this is in. So we've got log of m is 1.93 log of 45 plus 0.684. So shouldn't be too difficult. We'll get a decimal 3.8747 and so on. But that's obviously log of m to the base 10. Now, remembering about changing this up, so this will become 10 to the power of this. So my mass is 10 to the power of 3.8747 and so on. And here's my mass, 7493.766 and so on kilograms. We want it in two significant figures, so 7500. Let me just rewrite. 7500 zero, zero kilograms. Very, very much a straightforward first part of this question, just the substitution, and then remembering how to change this form into this form. Which I do know a lot of people forget, as it is from, I think, is it P1? Might be P2, but I think it might be P1. But it is from year 12. Now, part B is going to be using a bit more of this skill, so we need to show that it can be written in the form m equals pr to the power q, and we need to give those to three significant figures. So let's get back to the original. So we've got log 10 of m equals 1.93 log 10 of r plus 0.684. And we need everything in terms of just log to the base 10. So we get log base 10 as r to the 1.93 there, plus. And then this one is going to be log to the base 10 multiplied by it. So I'll take the extra step so you can see what I'm doing. Because same base, same log is going to be equal to 1. So I've not changed the size of this. So log 10m equals log 10r 1.93 plus log 10 10 0.684. Now I'm making some headway, but I do really need to get this as a single log. Now since we are adding, we would be multiplying within our logs. So we've got log 10 and we've got r to the power 1.93 multiplied by 10 to the power 0 0.684. And this is the log of m. Now you can see that the m and this bracket are going to be equal. So m equals 10 to the power 0 0.684 multiplied by r to the power 193. And then 10 to the power 0 0.684 is 4.83 to three significant figures. So it's 4.83 r to the 1.93. So it's just a matter of a bit of manipulation here. That's all you're doing. It should be quite straightforward and hopefully you followed that okay. An alternative method would have been to start with this one, 
take logs both sides and eventually spread it out until you have it in this form and then compare your values. So that is another or an alternative option for you. Which actually I'll just do very quickly to show you. Um, I'll do it in red here just so. Take logs of both sides. And we get log P plus log R to the Q. So log M equals bring my Q down. So let's do Q log R. So it's in line with the other one, log P. And you can see from the original up the top, we've got this as 1.93 log R plus log, not log, sorry, it's like, uh, well, it is a log. I'm going to put it as 0 0.684 like that, which is, you know, what we did in the earlier part of the question. But this is just, um, you know, in terms of a comparison, this value in terms of a log. And then you can see that Q is uh, 1.93 and P is 10 to the power 0 0.684. Okay, so that is like your, your alternative there. Um, and when you've done it, it is kind of nice sometimes to perhaps do what your P equals your 4.83 and your Q equals your 1.93, just to let your examiner kind of mark that quicker and easier. Part C was quite challenging, you know, with reference to the model, interpret the value of the constant P. So that does make it a little bit more challenging. But just think of it logically. You know, we're looking at mass. This is my radius. Yeah. So P is the mass essentially for a tree with radius of just one centimeter because if you think of this being one one to the power anything is just one so that then gives you the mass of p okay so p is mass of tree in kilograms when or maybe better to say with radius one centimeter Another challenging question for many, many candidates here, with a significant number of them scoring either zero or one marks on this one. Arc sine graphs, I gotta say they're not exactly my favorite either. And uh, we've got to start with a sketch. So these are the kind of things that, you know, you should really be learning, um, or you should at least be able to, or in a position to work them out. And think of this like kind of another way. If I think y equals uh, arc sine a half x, then sine y equals a half x, x equals 2 sine y. So that's kind of what I'm going to sketch, but I'm going to be going along the x axis instead of the y axis. Sorry, I meant the y-axis instead of the x-axis. Don't know what I was talking about there. Point in the right direction, saying the wrong thing. And this just looks something like this. It's almost as if it's a bit of a, a tan kind of graph, isn't it? But this is all I am doing. Now... I'm just going to show you another way I sometimes think of these graphs based on what we just did. So if I'm thinking of x equals 2 sine y there, what I'm going to do is just draw this as I normally would. So, you know, normally I'm drawing something like this, aren't I? And then it's carrying on for sine. But in these types of graphs, we can't have that kind of repeated part which is why they cut off as a single um, part of the graph there, okay? And this is because to be a function, 
it needs to be one to one or many to one. It can't be one to many. So that's the idea there. Now, when I come to draw this, obviously right now this is like as if I've drawn it with X and Y. But this is the opposite way around. What we've drawn is, you know, Y equals two sine X. So what we actually need to do here is swap my X and Y axes. So I want to swap my X and Y axes. Okay, so this is going to become Y. And this axis is going to become Y. But this needs to be a positive, And this needs to be positive, yeah? So when I turn this around, you know, if I just talk about kind of turning this around like a rotation, that positive is pointed in the wrong direction. So let me just turn it back. So what we're actually doing from this original, we're actually first wanting the mirror image. Okay, and then a rotation. And now you can see the two positives are going in the right direction. Okay, and that there is my graph, the one that we just drew, isn't it? You know, if you follow that, it's the same graph as we just drew. So that is another way of kind of looking at it. That's kind of why I do this and that's the way I look at it. I draw this graph and then I swap my axes and then make sure the X's and the Y axes where they were, the new versions, you know, are pointed in the right directions. Maybe this will help some of you. If this starts to confuse you, please just forget it. Anyway, back to the question. Um, obviously the values we could put on here, two minus two and pi by two and minus pi by two there. Now, part B has my rearrangement that we'd already done, and we need to show this. So first step here is to differentiate dx by dy. So it's going to be two and sine differentiates the cots. Now together in this part of the form, what I need to really be thinking about is my sine squared plus cot squared. So if I think about, in fact, let me write it down here. Sine squared y plus cos squared y equals one. Cos squared y equals one minus sine squared y. And cos y equals one minus sine squared y, and then square rooted. So what that means is, with my two cos y, I can replace this with two square root one minus sine squared y. And this is still dx by dy at the moment. Now x is equal to two sine y. So thinking of this sine y and this, again, I'll do this a little bit in green here. So x equals two sine y. So x over two is equal to sine y. Or x squared over four is equal to sine squared y. And I need to substitute that into here. So dx by dy now is two square root one minus x squared over four. So that's two, one. Now, what I wanna do is make this as a single fraction. So let me re, sorry, let me redo the square root. So as a single fraction, this is gonna be four minus x squared over four, square rooted which is then two square root of four minus x squared over two. These twos are gonna cancel, leave me my final answer of square root of four minus x squared. So therefore, a equals that four from there. 
Hopefully you did follow that okay, but if you ever see it in this kind of term, um, oh sorry, I haven't actually finished this bit here, but if you do see this term, then this is the method you need to use. Um, so my apologies, I know A is 4, but we didn't put the dy by dx, did we? So let me just get rid of this bit. So actually then dy by dx is 1 over square root of 4 minus x squared. Therefore A equals 4. I'll put it over that side instead. Okay. Apologies there, just jumping a little bit too far ahead. But that's why I wanted in terms of dy by dx. So for this one, we've got dy by dx equals 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we're told the y-coordinate here is pi minus, oh sorry, pi over 4. So x equals 2 sine y. So that's 2 sine pi by 4, which is 2 times root 2 over 2, or just root 2 there. So that's my x value. So therefore, dy by dx is equal to 1 over square root of 4 minus root 2 squared. So that is 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2 if I rationalise it. And then final steps here, we have an x coordinate of root 2, the y coordinate is pi by 4, we have the gradient of root 2 over 2, or 1 over root 2, and so we want to use y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 don't have to use this method, but this is my personal preferred method. So there we have it. We went in the form y equals mx plus c. So let's continue here. Root 2 over 2x minus root 2 times root 2 is 2. So 2 over 2, that's 1. So y equals root 2 over 2x minus 1 plus pi by 4. Now this was the last question in this particular paper and was the most demanding of students, or certainly that's what the students or the candidates seem to show. Um, a small proportion did get a fully correct response for this. But again, you know, being the last question, there would have been a load of other students that maybe could have done it, but just ran out of time. Um, and that time element is what, you know, would have hampered some of them. Now, first part here is quite straightforward. It's just expanding that bracket, isn't it? So one plus two cos two x squared. So let's square the first, 1 plus twice the product, so 4 cos 2x, plus square the last, 4 cos squared 2x. Now you can see that we're almost there. We've got this here, we've got this here, but here we've got a cos 4x and we've got a cos squared 2x. So that's where I want to concentrate now. I'll do this in green. So if I think of cos 2a, as in the double angle formula, this is the same as 2 cos squared a minus 1, which is 2 cos squared a, and this is cos 2a plus 1. Or I could write this as cos squared a and pop the halves in here. But I'm not going to, and the reason I'm not going to is that up here we've got 4 already. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to convert this. So this will be 4 cos squared a times in it by 2. This will be 2 cos 2a plus 2. 
And then all I want to do here is switch the A for the 2X. So A is 2X. We'd have 4 cos squared 2X equals 2 cos 4X plus 2. Now I can substitute this in. So we've got a 1 plus 2 cos 2x squared. And this now is equal to, equivalent to, 1 plus 4 cos 2x plus 2 cos 4x plus 2. So that gives me 3 plus 4 cos 2x plus 2 cos 4x. So this is what was required. So P is 3, Q is 4, R is 2 there. So part B, my first step, I'm going to find this area, but my first step is to work out this value of A. So this is obviously when we have our equation here. but we need y to be zero. So when y is zero, the inside of my bracket has to be zero, doesn't it? So two cos two x equals minus one, cos two x equals minus a half. Now I like to let this equal a separate value. You know, I like to do it quite simply like so. So theta in this case, I get 120 degrees, or um, this would be 2 pi by 3 in terms of radians. Should be in radians uh, for the final part, for the integration. But the first bit, you know, we could be going with degrees initially, um, just in terms of what we kind of want to think about. Now, this is going to be the first value here. First value I get to is this one. If I'm thinking of my cast diagram, this is 60 degrees, but here and here is when my values are, my cos is negative. Here's the 120, which is that first one. The second one will be 180 plus 120, which is 240 degrees. So that's four pi by three radians. So these are my two values for theta. So this will be like my first value and then my second value. But obviously theta as we had was actually two x. So x is 60 degrees and 120 degrees. Or x is if we're dividing by 2, it will be pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3 radians. The one we want is the second value. Yeah? So we now just need to make that statement. So A equals 2 pi by 3. Okay? Again, you will get the mark for working out A if it's in degrees but you need to have it in radians when we move into the integration. So a here is two pi by three. So I'm integrating between two pi by three and zero, and I'm integrating my three, and we got four cos two x plus two cos four x dx. And now you can see why they wanted it in this form, because it's far easier to integrate in this form. So three is gonna become three x, and then integrating four cos two x, so we get cos integrate to sine. So this is gonna become four sine two x, and then I need to divide by this differentiated, so I'm dividing by 2. Plus, we get 2 sine 4x. OK, 
can divide by this differentiated, so we're dividing by 4. And that's between 2 pi by 3 and 0. Now, I do like to go in with a bit of simplifying, so that's going to be 2 there, and this one's going to be 1 half. Substitute my values in, so we get 3 times 2 pi by 3, plus 2 sine, and we've got two lots of it, so it's 4 pi by 3, plus a half sine 8 pi by 3, minus, I'm sorry, I had to make a bit of room there, so minus 0 plus 2 sine of 0 plus a half sine of 0. Which is nice because that's just 0, isn't it? So that leaves me with 2 pi plus negative root 3 plus root 3 over 4. So let me just put the i in. So that leaves me quite simple. So that we get 2 pi minus 3 root 3 over 4. Again, I don't, for the last question in the test, I don't think this was particularly difficult. Just required you having enough time really to answer it. And obviously, if you couldn't get the first part of the question, then that really did hamper your second part. So this one, you know, it wasn't worth very many marks, but candidates had to spot that this was the chain rule or reverse chain rule to be able to solve this. And not spotting that meant that this either was a question that candidates couldn't resolve, couldn't answer, or it was a question that took them quite a long time, a lot longer than the two minutes per part as indicated by the marks. So first part, we've got our integration here. I'm going to call this i. So it's 3x minus 2 over 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. And this again is just spotting that if you differentiate this bottom, you get something similar to the top. Yeah, you know, 6x minus 4 is very similar to the top. You can already pretty much see the answer. So if I think of the bottom, what I would do with that bottom is just as a rough integration, if it was 1 over, it would be log 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. And if I differentiated this, I'd get 1 over 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 times it differentiated, isn't it? Which is 6x minus 4. So this is 6x minus 4 over 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. And you can see that that is 2 times bigger than this one. It's 2 times 3x minus 2 over 3x squared minus 4x plus 5, isn't it? Obviously, we want to get rid of this two times, so we're going to divide by two, which means that's what we want to do to our answer. So the answer to this integration here is a half ln 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 plus c. Super quick and super easy. Part two is, again, very much the same way, isn't it? It's almost an exact copy. Well, not an exact copy, because it's not going to be a log, because this is a power, but anyway. So let's just think, you know, if this was, you know, on the top, it would be a minus 3. And if I did an integration to that, roughly, it would be a minus 2. So let's let x y equal 2x minus 1 to the power uh, minus 2. Then what I get if I differentiate this is minus 2 
e to the 2x minus 1 to the power minus 3, multiplied by the inside differentiated, which will be 2e to the 2x, because e to the 2x differentiates the 2e to the 2x. So that gives me minus 4e to the 2x over e to the 2x minus 1 cubed. So looking at comparing this with the original here, is this factor of minus 4. It's 4 times bigger, negative 4 times bigger. So we will need to, you know, divide by minus 4. So we got to do the same at the start. So it's minus a quarter. So my integral, sorry, uh, e to the 2x over e to the 2x minus 1 cubed is simply minus 1 quarter e to the 2x minus 1 to the minus 2. Or you could write it as minus 1 over 4 e to the 2x minus 1 squared. And don't forget your plus c. But personally, in this kind of case, I would probably just leave it as this first answer to avoid making any mistakes and to save on time. Now, final question in this paper. And this question was really one that, for the candidates, set the difference between the most capable candidates and the ones who didn't quite have that same level of understanding. Um, from this part, B was very challenging for a lot of candidates. A and C, not too bad. So part A, we have x equals 3 sec squared 2y. Now, I know, and this is in the formula booklet, that sec will differentiate to sec tan. So thinking about that, first thing I want to do is I just want to rewrite this in this kind of form as it makes a bit more sense to most people. So dx by dy is, now to differentiate this, I need to multiply by my bracket, six sec two y, and then I take one away from my bracket which will be just one. So two take away one is one. And then I need to multiply by the inside of my bracket differentiated. So sec 2y will be two sec 2y tan 2y. So that will then give me 12 sec squared 2y tan 2y which is quite a nice one, and it's one that you guys should be comfortable doing this uh, differentiation here. Just anything with a bracket, you know, multiply by that, take one away, and then multiply by the inside differentiated. Now, part B is a hence, so it means using part A will generally make your life a little bit easier. So we would be starting with my dx, by dy, so 12 sec squared 2y tan 2y. Now looking at this bit, we can substitute that in, can't we? You know, x equals 3 sec squared 2y. So for example, 4x is going to be 12 sec squared 2y. So I can say straight away that's 4x tan 2 2y. That's what I'm up to at the moment. Now, my next step is again to start with this x equals 3 sec squared x. So let's put it here. x equals 3 sec squared 2y. And if you remember that tan squared, let's call it a, plus 1 is equal to sec squared a. So if that a is obviously 2y here, you know, we can say that sec squared can then be replaced by tan squared 2y plus 1. So 
So x is equal to 3 tan squared 2y plus 3. So x minus 3 over 3 is equal to tan squared 2y. We want tan 2y, so tan 2y is going to be the square root of this, x minus 3 over 3. So substituting that in, we get 4x multiplied by the square root of x minus 3 over 3. So I've got 4x root x minus 3 all over root 3, just separating out that square root here and I'm doing that because I need to flip this don't I so then finally my actual dy by dx which is what we want is root 3 over 4x root x minus 3 now you can see that this is the form of pq here so P is root three and Q is four. And it also does tell me here that P is irrational, which it is, and Q is an integer, which is what we got. Now, final question or final part here, part C. Equation of the normal at C is this, where Y is pi by 12. So we're just finding this equation. So we know that Y is, pi by 12, therefore x is 3 sec squared, uh, 2 times pi by 12, so pi by 6. So you're looking at 3 over cos squared of pi by 6, aren't you? And that gives me that x is 4. So there's my x and my y. Now my dy by dx means this is root 3 over 16 root 4 minus 3, which is 1. So we just got root 3 over 16. So we've got our x and y value, but this is a normal, isn't it? So my actual gradient will be change the sign and flip it. Okay, which in this case... If I rationalise, would be minus 16 root 3 over 3. So using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. y minus pi by 12 equals minus 16 root 3 over 3. x minus 4 here. So you've got y minus pi by 12 equals minus 16 root 3 over 3x minus, uh, sorry, plus now 64 root 3 over 3. So y equals minus 16 root 3 over 3x plus 64 root 3 over 3 plus pi by 12. And job done. Uh, if you found this video useful, you want to see more like this or have any other suggestions, just comment down below.